Our Bob Glauber, who's uh, really good, fun guy, good opinions, NFL columnist for Newsday in New York City. What's happening, Bobby? How you been? Gentlemen, I'm doing great. How you guys doing? We are Good. fantastic. We have no complaints. The Giants are finding a way to lead the NFC East. Who would have thought <laughs> after two weeks and we're ready to can everybody? I know. It, you know, I tell you, if I've learned one thing over the years in covering this league is that things change, and sometimes on a weekly basis, certainly on a monthly basis, and this is there's no better example. And I think, you know, it's hard to preach patience in this era of, you know, you want answers yesterday, but... You really have to wait these things out, and I think that's why it's a great league because you do get these dramatic turns um, that you just don't see coming in, in, in good ways and bad ways, and in the Giants' case, it's been both so far. Yeah, and that's going to be a muddled division for a while. Should make the Jets-Giants game fun in December. NFC is going to be crowded. I think we all agree for the duration of the season. You know, it's interesting, Bob. You know, it's, it's never really fun doing this, but we have to, and uh, kind of reading the the room on a couple of head coaches and, and how hot their seats are. In your opinion, I mean, listen, there's obviously a few a few coaches who uh, are already on the way out. It seems to be past that point. Which situations are just simply untenable in your mind? Just cannot be resolved at a time for a new coach this offseason or maybe sooner. Well, you know, I think the one in Miami was clearly the, the, the one that was first and foremost, and, and that resolved itself pretty quickly. I, you know, it looks like Sean Payton's time has mm-hmm. kind of, yeah, uh, it, it's it's not time has run out. It's just that you know the process has the cycle. It's time, and I, I don't know if he's going to be able to kind of get that team back. Defense is a mess, and it has been a mess for a long time. Drew Brees is not the same guy, so I, you know it, it looks like they're going to probably make a change there. And that's going to be one of those cases where if they do make a change, Sean Payton is going to be pretty in pretty high demand. I, I wonder if Jim Caldwell now, who did a, just a phenomenal job last year, is is going to be on the hot seat. I, you know, I don't I don't think so because I think there'll be a little bit more patience there. But it it really has kind of unraveled in a very quick way. You know, Jim Tom Sula, I think he's going to be okay. I don't think they're going to pull the plug after a year. So, you know, there aren't too many situations uh, that are dire right now. The the Dolphins won. Um, that that was it. And, um, you know, I think Lovey Smith gets at least a couple of years to, to work things out in Tampa. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, if, uh, I may be missing something obvious here, but I don't think so. Well, let me – I'm sorry, Tim. I was going to say, and is there enough progress? I know Bortles made some play yesterday. Is there enough progress in Jacksonville? I think at this point Gus Bradley's 8-30. and 30. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a pretty decent body of work. Is Gus Bradley in any trouble? I think he might be. Um, you know, this is a very young team. I think last year they were the youngest team in the NFL, and for that reason, there was a lot of patience with Gus Bradley. And, you know, you look at Dave Caldwell, the general manager, and, you know, I think that if if you're looking at reasons, he is kind of front and center there as well. Often in the NFL, it's the coach that goes first and the GM gets another hire. So, yeah, I I think it's certainly worth watching. Bortles had a good game yesterday, but the team overall – you know, they take one step forward and four steps back. And, you know, it's 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 not good for progress and, and certainly not good for head coaching security. Yeah, you know, you when you look at head coaching security early on in the season because of the condition that seemed to be developing between his quarterbacks, Mike Pettin in Cleveland seemed to be on an early hot seat and as well as his, his, his general manager and, and, and farmer. But they seem to have stabilized it a little bit. Maybe it's because the division, other than the Bengals who are undefeated, feels kind of average. Mm-hmm. Uh, did we underestimate Josh McCown and who he can be? You know, Tiki, I, I, I don't know that we've under, underestimated him, but, you know, he's, he's now engaged in these two shootouts yeah. uh, against, in two weeks in a row against Phillip Rivers. He loses that one, and he, and he beats Joe Flacco. You know, the guy is, is a good, solid veteran quarterback who now is putting up some numbers that I, I don't know that anybody expected. Honestly, when Johnny Manziel had the good game in week two and everyone was saying, oh, you've got to put him in, you know, it's time. I was like, wait a minute. You invested the entire offseason in Josh McCown, and I get it. You know, he's a he's you know a quote journeyman quarterback, but while Josh McCown was busy learning the offense and going in OTAs and, and leading that team, Johnny Manziel was was you know getting himself right in in alcohol rehab. So you know to just turn it on an injury like that and not without giving him a chance. I think Mike Pettin absolutely did the right thing. It was not a popular decision, but it's one of those situations where as a coach. You got to make those decisions sometimes, and I think that Josh McCown's play, especially over the last couple of weeks, 
has certainly justified it. And you know, now, uh, unless he really collapses and, and just falls falls through, I, you know, I think you're going to see him for a, at least an extended period of time. And it it makes Mike Pettin certainly look good that he made the right choice. Uh, over Brian Hoyer taking Josh McCown. Yeah, and listen, I called myself out for this this morning. We were all chiming in, you know, from a distance. Oh, God, Mike Patton, what are you doing? How do you not play Josh? Well, you know, he does know his roster better than we do, and uh, McCown's play the last couple of weeks has justified the decision. With that, scene, with that being said, Bob, 25% of the season just about done. What's the best story so far in your opinion? Man, you guys hit me with these open-ended questions. Yeah, listen, we just I, want to I give you a chance to talk, Bob. So Make a demo tape. unprepared for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're writing these great stories. We want you to give you a chance to showcase them. We know you can all, Bob. Yeah, okay. Um, the, the biggest surprise, the biggest, the best story. It could, it could be the worst or it could be the best. I mean, you want a you know, positive connotation or, or the other way, whichever you view it. Biggest surprise. Oh, God. I don't know. Is I'm it not, Tampa? I don't, I don't Is it the Falcons? Standings in front of me. The, the best. Falcons? Uh, the Falcons are, are a, a, a huge surprise. I, I just did not expect that this early on. And I think Dan Quinn, you know, the Jets had Dan Quinn and Todd Bowles as 1-1A. One one I, I guess Bowles kind of emerged late in the process, and that's that's a pretty good choice right there. I think the Jets are, are certainly up there as far as surprises go, especially, you know, the, the day that Geno Smith got punched on August 11th, you think <laughs> if they're going to be 3-1 and one, and within striking distance of the Patriots, um, I, I think that's a huge surprise. The Falcons are absolutely up there. I think the biggest disappointment is probably the Lions. My uh, my colleague Neil Best, who, who you guys know pretty well, yeah. uh, the media writer for Newsday, picked the Lions to go to the Super Bowl. So yeah, wow. stick to media critiques. Neil. <laughs> he did fess up today. No, so, did he? <laughs> yes, he did. He saw the error of his ways. The team that they played, though, the after Arizona column Car- number two thousand about Francesa, he finally yeah. uh, finally <laughs> fessed up. Yeah, <laughs> that's all he writes about. The team Jeez, they played, the though, easiest Bob, job in the world. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals. I know they've lost the game, but I, I would posit that they're right up there with the undefeated team still left yep. because they are they played so well for a lot of the games this season. They really have TK. And I I tell you what, when I look at the Cardinals this year. I look at them differently than I did, say, coming into the season. You know, a couple of questions on defense. Uh, you know, Carson Palmer coming off the knee injury, how would he react to that? But they're playing, you know, not just good football, but they're playing great football. I know they stumbled last week, but, you know, that happens over the course of a season. Bruce Arians is, is an awesome coach, and I think we're all lucky to have him as a coach at this point in his life and in his career because – he doesn't give a, a darn about what he says <laughs> right. and how he acts. He, he just knows that he, he operates by the courage of his convictions. And when you're a young coach, um, you know, sometimes you just kind of dial it back a little bit. But Arians is just full throttle. And he's got the, the team believing in him. And I think he's right when he says that he has never worked with a quarterback at this point in his career the way Carson Palmer is. Right now, Carson Palmer, to me, is the comeback player of the year. And I don't, I don't know that it's close for second at this point. He's been, uh, he's been really good, and he has been since minute one with Bruce. Bob, good catching up. Been a while, Bob Galauber, Newsday here in New right, York guys, City. Hey, next time, specific yeah. questions, man. <laughs> we'll, try, we'll try to make it easy for you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs>